Hi everyone, it's Captain Andy from Andy's Hobby Headquarters, and I've got a very exciting build to share with you guys today. Today we're going to be building up the brand new, soon to be released, 172nd scale U9 submarine from the company Das Werk. This is a very famous U-boat from World War I, and very excited about building it up. Many of you may have seen the preview video we just did a few days earlier. If you haven't, check that out, and you can see all the parts up close on it. It's not a ton of parts, so I th it's pretty large, as you can see right here. It's 32 inches long once it gets built up. And I've wanted to do something a little different than some of the armor that we've been doing lately. So this is fits the bill exactly. So let's get started. Okay, we're going to start off building our U-9 submarine. And the first off, hey look, we get a bathtub style hull right here. And actually you get two halves of that bathtub style hull. Now the first thing I'm going to recommend is go ahead and assemble your, your little cradle here to hold the, bo uh, the boat. And that is because while you're working on it, you have a place to put it down and it won't fall over and knock off any of the accessory pieces. Now the way the instructions are laid out, the first thing we want to do is install all of these pegs inside here. These are the stiffeners for the inside of the hull. And finally, this one big stiffener here. The way they come on the sprue, too, as you can see right here, each one is labeled out. I'm going to advise not to cut these off until you actually need the piece because they're all different sizes as the hull gets you know, narrow and wide down the road. You don't really need to sand anything. It's all inside anyway, so we don't have to worry about that. So what we'll do is... As like this one is the very front number 10 here, we'll cut this one off and start gluing them on down the line. Okay, actually I was wrong. There is one tinier little peg we need to put in first up here in the front. And also remember when we're doing all this stuff, we only want to do one whole side of the, uh, the sub. Just build everything up on the one side and then later on we can push both sides together. Now we've also assembled up just two of the other little hull structures. This one has the, uh, the torpedo doors, tube doors on the front, which will get glued into place right here. This kind of almost snaps right into place. And then we have our center support, which will get glued right into place just like that. And then of course we'll just fill in the rest of all of those center pegs. So I will go ahead and get all of that in. It's pretty, pretty simple I would say. Just glue down the pegs, making sure that we're following the instructions exactly so we get it all lined up. And I'll come back and show you what it looks like. We are letting all of the center supports dry right now. And this is just a quick little builder's tip. When you're going to put them in, obviously we want them to be perfectly straight. If you do not put it in the display stand, the sub wants to fall over like this. So you can notice right here, you can get it to go perfectly straight up and down by putting it inside the little holder there. I've gone ahead and glued both sides of the U-boat together, and that was actually not too difficult at all. It's a matter of lining up as best as possible you know both sides and then because you've got a pretty big opening right here is to just take each one of these pins and kind of just snap 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 them into place and finally when you get the last one you'll notice the entire hull just slams together now I didn't show that on camera because you're holding it pretty close to the body and holding it with both hands the camera kind of being in the way but it was pretty simple once you just started lining up all of those pieces now we need to start working on the deck of the ship or the boat here and we need to first of all glue up these funnels for the uh, the engines and there'll be a little bit of a seam on the side here that we'll take care of and then it'll get dropped into this portion right here oh, actually flipped over and they don't want you to glue this piece down so you'll be able to open and close those as you want and then it'll just get glued right into the the deck itself and then there are a couple of a little tiny pieces here that'll get glued into the bottom down here. So I'm gonna take care of all of that stuff. I've got some more sanding I wanna do here. There was a little touch of a seam that we had here that we're filling with some putty. It's real, real minor, sanding that all the way out. And I will get these just couple of pieces glued into place and then we'll show you how the deck fits in. Wanna give you guys a quick little builder's tip too, just to keep in mind when you're building this portion of the deck. Now this is the bottom of the deck here, and we have to put these three pieces together to create this assembly. 
So it'll look like that inside. Hopefully you can see that little pin in there. So you want to make sure when you go to glue these in, the very first piece will just get glued into place, but you want that little, that little notch right there to be pointing towards the rear of the ship, just like that. So once you get that glued in, everything else will line up perfectly around that. So making sure that first one goes in and glued into place like that. And you'll notice when you're actually building it that the next piece has a little notch cut in it as well. It just makes everything perfect so when you're looking from the top down that little piece won't be at a weird angle. As you can see here we have the hole all done as well as putting on those top pieces. And it's a little hard to show the whole thing going together but we're going to go ahead and glue the deck into place and you can see it kind of just snaps in and then once that gets glued on you can put these all the little accessories up front here that kind of almost like secure it and you can see how well the fit is on this kit all kind of just clicks together so it's gonna take me a couple seconds here obviously to go and get the glue all the way down the seam all the way on it and glue that into place and then we have the conning tower right here that we'll start working on Now we can start working on the conning tower and there's not a ton of parts inside of here of course but we do want to make sure everything lines up just the way it's supposed to. Did a little dry fitting and looked really really nice. kind of interesting the way they did even on this angle the little pins just like that and then we can go ahead and glue this rear portion in once we get the back glued on and then it's just a matter of putting these two pieces but I'll show you how those go on in a few seconds And now we can go ahead and attach the conning tower. And before we do that though, I want to show you this little sleeve that they give you that has the ladder inside here. So if you are going to leave the top hatch open, you can actually look down and see the, the ladder in place there that they would climb down to get into the actual U-boat. Now that is going to slide right into place. We are, we're going to glue that in a minute, of course. That will glue right over the top here just like that. Now a minute ago you may have watched me put this little wooden piece on which are wooden slats. I actually didn't glue it into place because I'm hoping to paint this separately and then attach it later so it'll fit right up on top there but that'll be a little bit easier to paint the wood than it would be to you know paint it once it's in place. Okay this is the area where the rear torpedo hatches get installed so they just pop right into place just like that. And once that dries, we can go ahead and attach it right here on the back of the, the boat. Now with that in place, we want to flip it over very gingerly here because I've also started working on the propeller shafts. And you can see how they go in here just like this. Here's one of the shafts. Here is the uh, other portion in there. They have a stop inside so you can't go too far in. And then it's just a matter of gluing them into place right on these little tiny holes right here. And what I'll do is quickly just give you a close-up of the instructions to let you see how that whole thing goes together. We also have a center support 
that is some very, very thin plastic. So we're going to let that fully dry. And you're supposed to actually attach it after all these other pieces are in place so you don't end up snapping it. So I've just glued this one here. We're going to let that dry a little bit longer. Then we'll come back and glue this one into place and then apply the, the center. We're going to leave the, uh, the screws off for now because we want to paint them separately a different color. Next up we are installing the dive planes. And the way they've designed this, they have a nice firm fit that we can actually put in without glue. So if we decide we want to adjust them later, we can have that option. Also, we will glue these little supports in. I believe these are actually like a guard for the dive planes. But uh, I'm not going to glue those in yet because while we're painting it, once again, those are going to be really fragile. We don't want to break any of those off. And then, as we get to the, the back of the ship, we'll flip this around here. We've got a few other things we need to install. First of all, we have our rudder, which will slide right up into place in here. Nice tight fit on that. And I'm assuming this is another uh, like rudder for underwater that we'll go ahead and glue that into place. That one I think will be pretty safe that we won't have to worry about it coming out, you know, getting knocked or anything. And finally, we also have built up our little machine guns that we can put on the deck here just like that. And while we have that, we can also glue these pieces into place. Just like that. And then we also have the option with the hatches to have them either open or closed for both the rear and the, uh, the forward hatch as well. I'm thinking I'll probably have them closed seems like one more thing to kind of knock off while I'm building and painting. But like I said, you do have that option. And while we're at the back of the boat here, I'll show you a few other little pieces that we will glue on soon. Uh, we built up it's just two little pieces of the flagpole for the back here. It'll get mounted right into place just like that. Probably not going to stay without glue, but you get the idea on it. And also, we're going to apply the rear dive planes just like that. Those will also not get glued into place because we want to be able to A, move them, or B, remove them completely if we, uh, if we need to. Also, you'll see there's a hole here, here, and here. And those are the, like I said, assume guards. They do hold some rigging as well. Not going to apply those right now too because during painting process, I think that's a good chance of snapping those off. And one other thing that we will apply right now is right here, a nameplate for each one of the U-boats can go on and that is where you get the opportunity to choose which one you want to do so let's find it right here uh, yep there it is so U-9 is listed right here but they also over here have U-10, 11, and 12 Whoop, got it upside down but you get the idea on it there so we will go ahead since we're going to build U-9 put the U-9 markers right inside there Okay, next we can work on the conning tower right now. And what I'm going to quickly do is show you the instructions. So we'll show you the parts that are going to go into place there because they're, they're pretty, pretty simple stuff to glue on there. But the thing I do want to show you with the conning tower is the ability to have two different types of cages go around here. The first one being just the, uh, the wire or the, you know, the bar type one. And then they also have a secondary one that we've glued together that has the canvas cover around it. Now I'm in the process right now, there is a, a uh, push pin mark that we've got to uh, clean up right in there. I've got some putty drying in there. More than likely I want to keep this one on right here, but I do like the option that they give us the, uh, the canvas cover one too. And according to the instructions, it can be changed at any time. You don't need to glue this into place. As you can see, it fits pretty tight just as it is there. So we're going to go ahead and get all the other little parts glued on to the, uh, the conning tower and then we will show you just a few of the other pieces like where the masts and stuff go and then it actually be pretty much time for paint. And here we are with our mostly completed boat. Uh, I've gone ahead and I've sprayed the top of this area right in through here as well as the conning tower in XF19 which is Tamiya's Sky Gray. And that's the color they're calling out for it on this. Now, I made a kind of a mistake here 
and the mistake is something that I can hopefully help you guys out with. Didn't look far enough into the instructions and look into the painting scheme on this. And if I had, I would have noticed that the conning tower is all gray, and then this portion of the deck is a real, real dark gray. And the mistake I made is I should not have glued this into place. I could have built that whole thing up and left the deck off. We could have painted that as one big piece, dropped it into place, and then glued the, the, uh, the conning tower on. It would have just made painting a whole heck of a lot easier. So as you can see right now, I'm going over everything and using masking tape to paint the, the rest of the, the boat. Now this line from here down will all be the dark gray. The deck itself will be dark gray. Uh, minus the conning tower and then there will also be a shape in here a very specific shape that is uh, called out and I'll show you actually a piece of the instructions in a second there that will also be dark gray but we're not going to do that right away the thing we're going to work on now as you can see we've got the deck masked off as well as the the lower part of the hull and I can show you the uh, the instructions right here what it looks like all done up so, I am going to go ahead and paint those right now since we've got this mask. I will obviously put a little bit more masking in between this portion and that portion so we don't get any overspray at all. I, I'm probably not going to show it on camera unless I think I can get a decent angle, but the, the boat is so large, uh, it's, it's kind of in the way that we don't want to end up knocking off parts accidentally because we're trying to avoid the camera. But I'll see what I can do with that. But if not, you might see me back in a couple of seconds with a painted deck and a painted lower hull. As you can see we've got the hull painted right now as well as the deck and I apologize wanted to show you guys a little bit how it went on but it was just a lot a lot of work doing that definitely consider doing the deck and the conning tower separately I think it would save you a lot of extra time. Now I've taken some of Tamiya's flexible masking tape and we've masked this portion of the deck off with the, the flexible stuff and then we're going to go over it now again with the regular masking tape to fill in the the edge here so we don't have any overspray. So that's going to take a little bit of time to get this masked off but we do need to get that top portion of deck painted as well. And we will come back and do that. Now after I got this portion of the paint put on I did go ahead and spray the entire thing with uh, clear coat and that was to seal in our paint job and that makes it less likely when we use masking tape to pull up our other mask our other paint job the uh, the clear coat really seals it in pretty well and we also don't leave the tape on very long as well so let's get all of this masked off we'll paint this top portion the dark gray and hopefully when we come back we'll show you what it looks like in good condition well, I have the deck painted and it actually did work out all right. The white flexible tape worked perfectly. Now, these little bell-shaped things here need to be painted red. And as you can see here, it took the time to mask off that one. And then I was, it took a while to do all that, of course. Then I realized I have my Tamiya circle templates, which we've gone ahead and just put one together like that with a little bit of masking tape. And we're actually going to paint them red like this, too, because we want to airbrush them so they come out nice and even. We're going to leave that one the way it is because we spent, you know, 10 minutes doing that little bit of tape. But now the other three, we're just going to paint with that. And I'm just going to use regular, to me, a flat red for that. Okay, next up, we are going to be putting the nine decals on the front of the boat. And uh, to be quite honest with you, these are not the actual decals that are going to be coming with the boat. This is a very early sample copy, like I had told you guys earlier, and we did not have decals inside of it. But I had a set of nines left over actually from another DOS work kit. The font might be just slightly different on this, but it looks very similar to the pictures, so we're going to go ahead and use them. Now keep in mind, there's also going to be some more decals, and I plan on putting these on later on once we get them. There'll be some like, you know, the amount of depth and a few other little minor decals that will come with the kit that we're not going to show you in this particular part of the video, but I do want to have a number nine on the front of it, of course, both sides. Okay, guys, I've done a little experiment on the uh, the bow of the boat here, 
and uh, trying to weather. Don't want to go too, too crazy, but we do want to make it look like it's a an, an actual used uh, boat. So what you can see right here, we've up to up to about here, I've started doing the weathering. What I'm going to do now is slide the whole thing over and show you the steps that I've done to start doing this now. Okay, to start off, we're using a chipping brown color, which I'll show you the recipe for right now. And we're just taking our fine, fine Tamiya brush. And remembering, this is 70 second scale, so we don't want to go too, too crazy with some of the scratches here. And me, I'm picturing that there's going to be more wear and tear on the front of the ship or front of the boat, uh, unless as we go back around, but uh, that's kind of up to you how you want to do it. So using our, our small brush, we first want to create just some, some scratches and even maybe even a scratch down the side here and there, something got dragged. You just don't know what, what type of things can cause this kind of stuff. And obviously more on the top here at leading or the edge. Okay, so now with that, that is kind of a subtle effect that we have on it. Next, we're going to take a brush with some clean thinner. Actually, it's not 100% clean, I guess. It must have been a tiny bit of paint from the, the last time, but a little bit of clear thinner, basically enamel thinner. And we just want to wet this area down. And you'll see why in a minute here. Then we're going to take our Tamiya black panel liner and making it wet by, by hitting the top here we can get it to kind of flow a little bit easier down the row of rivets. And it just makes it so much easier to have a, a wet surface to begin with with enamel thinner. It allows the uh, the paint to flow a little bit better and not bunch up. And obviously this is a big boat and there is lots of rivets and lots of detail on this that we need to uh, do. So this is going to take a bit of time. So let me finish up with the black panel liner here and then I'm going to come back right after I do that and show you the next step. Okay, now that we've got that done, we're going to take a cotton swab that's dry and we're going to start going over these areas and removing some of the excess blending it slightly streaking it slightly but trying to keep most of it just on the actual little little areas that we want to have just like that keeping it more more of the center panel clean And with that done now, and this is kind of like a compressed thing, we're going to use some different colors as we go down the line. But the next one we're going to use is a little bit of a rest wash. Very, very small amount. Remember, 70 second scale. I'm just going to put a few little areas of this rust. And then taking our brush with a little bit of thinner on it, kind of just blend it in. And basically, it's the same process over and over again with the different colors. So now we're going to go back over and with a cotton swab, remove any the excess areas that we don't want to have too too dense and then as it dries it'll turn back into that kind of color right there so I have a lot a lot of work to do so I'm gonna start down the side of the ship and I'll get the whole side of the ship done and then I'll start working on the conning tower which will be a very very similar 
type approach, but we'll show you when we get to that point. Also decided to put a little bit of foam scratches on here too, which are the real, real light, light scratches. Seeing that it's 70 second scale, we don't want to go too, too crazy, uh, but I do want to put a few of these little little edge scratches, real, real micro scratches. Remembering this is extremely, extremely close up on it right now, but we are using our foam just to put a few extra ones on there. Okay, we've got the whole side of the uh, the ship all weathered up the way we wanted it. And I was going to show you how with the, the conning tower, but I ended up doing the exact same thing as we did on the side, just a lighter form of it. So just some real, real light wash and a little panel liner to highlight some things. to uh, Just because we figured it wouldn't be as bad looking the higher up the side of the boat. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the Timia black panel liner and carefully go down the line and fill in all of the panels on the decks. And then of course, if we get any anywhere we don't want, have our cotton swabs ready to wipe off any of the excess, but we want to do the entire deck here to make all those things pop out. The only be one other thing after we do that, we're going to seal the entire model after that uh, with some kind of debating back and forth. I think I'm going to use like a semi-gloss coating on this. I don't want a dead flat finish on it because I think most of the ships do have somewhat of a of a sheen to it. So once we get that done, we'll spray the whole thing and then we'll come back and show you a final reveal. Well, as you guys just saw with the uh, the two sides going by, we finished up the uh, the sub. Now, a couple quick things. You may have noticed there was no rigging on this right now. Now, remember, this is a very early sample copy of this ship. So there is going to be lots of aftermarket stuff coming out in the very near future. And with that, I'm going to use some of the rigging that is going to come out from the aftermarket, as well as some figures. And I've got a gallon of clear resin sitting down below that I would like to eventually maybe even do a diorama and partially submerge you know, the ship with a dock, things like that. That's all kind of in the future right now, so I didn't want to put any of the rigging on by just putting some stretch wire now and then have to remove it when the when the real good stuff comes out so let's kind of give you a quick little pan now on the actual sub just sitting here the fit was incredible on this kit everything went together exactly the way you would expect it to so you may have noticed that uh, on the, the the ship going by there is a clean side and a weathered side and the reason we did that was a lot of times people like to have ship models up on their mantles whether a u-boat or regular ship they will sometimes leave them in a pristine type of state so this is going to just go on the counter in my store and I want people to see both variants that if you want to really weather it up you can or if you want to leave it uh, in a pristine shape it's going to look great no matter what Okay, now the kit itself is going to be arriving sometime in January. So if you want to, you can get on the website, andyshq.com in the United States and get on the pre-order. If you live in Europe, you can get on modelbalconic.de and you can pre-order it on that site as well. Future beardless Andy here. I wanted to just take this opportunity to thank you guys for watching. But before we end this video, I wanted to ask you guys to do me a couple quick favors. First of all, I do from time to time get to talk to the manufacturers and I'm really curious what you guys would like to see new and different. Obviously a World War I U-boat is something exciting and I think is going to do really well in the model industry. So go ahead down in the comments down below and tell me something that would be something different rather than another Tiger or you know P-51 Mustang. What would be really cool that you think would sell a lot for the manufacturers to want to make something like that. Go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. That way you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. So I want to thank you guys as always for watching. And please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.